In this video, the Nikon Coolpix S9700, I'm going to do unboxing, look through the camera features, do sound test, video test with the 30x zoom, 1080p, 30 frames per second, and 720p, 60 frames per second. Image test from horizontal to vertical in the even panorama view, and what I think about this camera and what I don't like about it. So inside this box, it'll give you the warranty. That yellow slip right there is the warranty. It comes with a user manual. That warranty, I'm not really quite sure how long it actually lasts for yet. But anyways, it comes with a USB port. It gives you your charger, what you want, the charging AC adapter. That manual is kind of a pain in the ass. It doesn't give you much information about this camera, really. It gives you a strap and uh, the camera itself is actually in a nice foam, foam casing to keep it protected. That sand disc is um, up to 80 megs, megabytes per second. It's 16 hours, it's 64 megabytes, and sand disc extreme plus. You guys can look up a little bit more about it if you want. But inside here, here, hold on. And first touch. <laughs> first touchies. That strap is a pain in the ass. When I first tried to actually put it in there, I used the toothpick. The toothpick broke and didn't seem to work too well. So I upgraded to a little screwdriver and finally actually got it to go through. And then I was able to put it in properly. It's a nice looking camera. It takes about two, two and a half hours to charge. This is the spec list to the Coolpix S9700, and this is all the information about the camera, so you can pause the video at any time and check this part out. This here is a demonstration of what the video quality and the audio quality sound like, and uh, we'll go off to the pictures after this. <laughs> what was that about? This is some images that I snapped with the camera, just to give you a rough idea of how the quality actually looks on here. Um, my my editor doesn't do very good for outputting the quality, so I'll leave a couple of these images in the description. You guys can check it out. 
So I went around in town, took pictures, and I've took pictures of the sunset and just in low light environments just to give a test to see what this thing can really do. There is an issue with it though, like if it gets to be in really low light and you take pictures, it will eventually smear it. You would have to have a tripod to make sure the camera does not move. As seen in these images here, they look pretty smeary and it looks kind of uh, kind of distorted and gross. It's definitely not good for that. Um, you would probably want to go with a different camera if you're trying to choose like really, really low light. This one won't do it. I like the option of having the easy panorama on here. It does give you like normal 180 and it'll give you wide 360. Those. So like uh, 360 surrounding you, but there is an issue with it that I do not like. And you actually have to go perfectly uh, for speed. It's that or your... Um, it'll like render the image halfway or it'll tell you unable to create a panorama pan the camera more slowly So it's kind of a pain in the ass. You got to know how fast you're going and the the quality itself isn't that great It's almost like panning um, standard definition uh, Image and it's not as great But I kind of really like the feature because it could be used for like smaller images like on Facebook or just just in like um, a banner header or just something similar like that it would be really good but other than that with the panorama it's not the right camera for it I would recommend getting a different camera if you want to do a proper panorama view this one isn't as great but having the option there is nice to have but there is an issue apparently with this camera and earlier today I was uh, using the camera and I just turned it on. I was hearing like the gears still spinning in it and I went to turn it off and turned it back on and it seemed to be fine. But I ended up watching a video on, uh, on YouTube about a fail video of this. Here's a demonstration of what it actually does. Apparently this could be a flaw with this camera, I'm not quite sure, but I've heard the motor spin and it did not stop until I turned off the power and turned it back on. So that might be the fatal flaw of this camera, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Now, hopefully it's not going to be that much of a problem, but other than that, I seem to really like this camera. Um, it's seems to do me just fine for what I wanted to use it for. Like I just wanted a camera where I can take proper pictures and do good enough uh, video quality for it that's better than my other shitty camera like here's a preview against uh, that camera to give you a rough idea how much better this camera really is <laughs> Other than that, I wanted this for YouTube. I wanted to be able to zoom right into something, let it autofocus on that. I wanted to use it for pictures, just an all around camera. And this thing fits me just fine. It doesn't have like night vision on the camera, but uh, it's a really good, it's fit for me. I can use it for YouTube videos. I can use it for just all around camera. I just hope to God that that, uh, that, that zoom feature with it doesn't break so it's kind of a little worrying to me so if you guys are picking up this camera put that on the back note like that could be a fatal flaw with this camera but I don't see any other problems with it like I looked all over the internet and I don't see any other problems except for that one video and that kind of worries me because I've heard my motor spin in mine without it moving so other than that, uh, hopefully you guys liked the video. I tried to go through all the details. I went through um, basically the video, the audio test, um, the image quality, the panorama. I even gave you guys the full spec, so I don't really have to show you uh, anything on the display itself. But other than that, um, it does have Wi-Fi. Apparently this camera... 
you can connect it to a phone and you can be able to like take a picture with it and then you can send it off to your phone which is a really cool idea it also has GPS on it so that way if you do take a picture that's another thing I noticed too when you do take a picture with it it'll pinpoint you directly where you are and label you on the map if you want it to be abled on the map itself so you can pinpoint where you took the picture last kind of cool idea but it's just kind of awkward with that um, having GPS on it I guess maybe if it gets stolen maybe you can find it that way too maybe Probably not, but I noticed too that the satellite itself has to be over it just to get it to work. It didn't. Where I'm located, um, I had to wait a few hours, and then it finally showed some bars on the satellite. So I guess it wasn't over my head at the time when it, when it should have been enabled. But um, other than that, yeah, it's a nice camera. I like it. Um, Hopefully make some really good videos in the future and uh, be able to use it. Other than that, I'm going to let you guys go. Hopefully you guys like this full review. I know it's not your average type of review, but I tried to get at everything that I can with the camera. There's a few options in here that don't make sense to me yet. Um, it does have a shutter option. Like if you're taking like portrait portrait view, you take a picture and it'll like snap about um, 16 of those images. So you can go like through the images and find the perfect one you want. Just in case like a kid closes their eyes or they like, stop smiling or something like that, then you can go through the slideshow of that and choose which one you want. So it's a really cool option to have that. It does have a timer on it um, and a bunch of other options on here, but that's what I wanted. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Anyways, rate and subscribe. Have yourself a great day. Peace.